This week on Engineering Newswire, we're keeping things cool with the microwave, walking the walk with bipedal robots, solving traffic jam mysteries, and skidding off the runway with the space glider. We've all been guilty of putting the warm soda or brewski in the freezer to get it colder faster. We've also been guilty forgetting that we put it in there only to be welcomed by a sudsy mess once we open the freezer to grab a frozen pizza or ice cream. If only there was some kind of product that acted as a reverse microwave making things cooler faster. Well, you're in luck because EnviroCool is working on their VTEX chiller which can rapidly cool down a canned drink from room temperature to 5 degrees Celsius in just 45 seconds at the point of sale or consumption. The VTEX is designed to cool both cans and bottles of all shapes and sizes from a 150 milliliter can to a wine bottle by rotating the beverage at a certain speed to create a ring kind vortex. On a commercial level, service stations, supermarkets, grocery stores, bars, and restaurants can eliminate the multi-deck open refrigerators that are expensive and high energy. The aerospace company Sierra Nevada recently conducted the first free flight approach and landing test of the company's Dream Chaser spacecraft. The craft was lifted over 12,000 feet in the air by an Ericsson air crane and left to glide autonomously before landing on an airstrip in the Mojave Desert. A short flight that only took about a minute. The 29 foot long, 23 foot wide space glider drifted eloquently to the runway, but the left side landing gear failed to deploy. Obviously, landing gear failing to deploy causes a landing issue. Sierra Nevada hasn't released any video of the landing yet, but the company said that the craft skidded off the runway and is already under repairs. And since the test was autonomous, nobody was hurt. Currently, NASA relies on the Russian Soyuz capsule to taxi astronauts to the ISS. The Dream Chaser is one of three spacecraft being developed in the private sector with funding from NASA's Commercial Crew Integrated Capability Initiative. And they seem to be well on their way once they get that whole wheel hitting the ground thing figured out. My commute to and from work can be pretty hectic and frustrating at times, especially when traffic jams seem to appear out of nowhere. Well, a team of mathematicians from the universities of Exeter, Bristol, and Budapest have developed a mathematical model that shows the impact of unexpected events such as a truck pulling out of its lane on a dual carriageway. FYI, pretty annoying. Their model revealed that slowing down below a critical speed when reacting to such an event a driver would force the car behind to slow down further and the next car back to reduce its speed further still. The result of this is that several miles back, cars would finally grind to a halt with drivers oblivious to the reason for their delay. I just assumed it was stupid drivers who shouldn't be behind the wheel in the first place. Well, MIT has developed an algorithm to avoid the unpredictable traffic instabilities, which could be implemented by a variation of the adaptive cruise control systems that are found in many of today's high-end cars. Here's how it works. Using sensors such as a radar or laser rangefinders, a car with adaptive cruise control can monitor the speed and distance of other cars in front of it. When traffic gets backed up, the car will automatically slow when it needs to and return to its program speed when possible. However, the algorithm only works if a large percentage of cars are using it, and because laser rangefinders and radar systems aren't cheap, the adaptive cruise control will remain a high-end option. A research team at Texas A&M's Amber Robotics Lab has developed a bipedal robot with the most realistic gait yet. Basically, this thing walks more like a human than any robot before, if the person was chopped in half and their legs kept walking without them. The team has concentrated on getting the mechanical components of the robot, Amber 2 as they call it, to function like their human counterparts. Programming is another challenge in getting a robot to have a human-like gait. Devising complex human-like components require even more complex algorithms for control. Admittedly, the team says the balance may be an issue, you know, since the legs are attached to a stick. But the team is hoping that Amber 3 and 4 will show promise for a robot that can truly walk like a human. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PDND channel, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire.